Okay. So, because on my side it says you can, but let's try again. Something is happening, it appears. <laughs> it's <laughs> always frightening. That's, that's, there we go. It's, it's coming now. It's, it's terrifying. The slides will appear when they are ready. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. We're having difficulty loading. Here we go. It's coming. Okay. We, um, go. we can see it now. I can't. Um, can, can, everyone else can see my screen, but I I actually can't see it. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. I can see it now. Sorry about that. Um, I just uh, first of all thank you very much, uh, Stephanie, for for uh, inviting me. I've for for me this this meeting has uh, exceeded expectations. I've learned about a whole lot of things that that um, I didn't know about, and I have to say that. Uh, and like the speaker before me, I'm. Have have we lost the? Yes, your the slides just disappeared. I know. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me try again. Um, yeah, I wonder why, what's going on here. Sorry, this this has, it hasn't worked. Uh, well, um, Looks like it's coming okay. back now. Uh, let's hope. Um, I, uh, I, I just while, while we wait, as as is absolutely clear from from my, um, we can from, see now. Okay, I'm I'm waiting so that I can see it. Um, <laughs> there we are. Okay, good. Um, let's let's hope that it stays. Um, just to say. Um, how much I admire the the, uh, the previous speaker, who is really an expert in the field, and how um, uh, it's slightly intimidating coming after you, uh, uh, Rafilwe. And I, do, I don't think that there's anything in my presentation which hasn't already been covered, probably better by the previous one. So, so part part of me was to suggest that it's gone again. I mean, I cannot believe this. Um, sorry, just. Perhaps move on to your next slide before you get back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me. So, sorry about this, everybody. Um, this has this hasn't happened to me before. I've, I've shared so many. Okay, I'm not going to use PowerPoint. Uh, if you want to send me your you slide presentation, for, uh, profs, uh, email it to me, and then I can share for you. Okay. Let, let me just try one one thing. And um, maybe switch off and, your camera. Yeah. It won't let me do that either. Sorry. Sorry about this, everybody. No problem. Uh, it's it's all the load shedding and signal uh, problems and all well, sorts you've, you've, of other challenges. Yeah, it's 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 uh, that's very kind of you. It's also partly in my my uh, advanced age, I think. Um, Okay, it's still not. No, okay. Let me. Um, I can start talking. Um, yeah, just um, is. Uh, you can email to Janet at usaf.ac.za. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry about this. But it is showing. Is it showing now? Hmm. Okay, let's... I'm going to see if I can sync to presenter. Hold on a sec. Are you able to see? I can see, yeah. Yeah, working. Okay, so um, can people see my... <laughs> Sorry about this. Okay, so... So, so let Janet uh, advance your slides for you, Leslie. Oh, Janet. So, so will you will you present will you advance the slides for me? Okay, thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, Janet. Um, you are welcome. Okay, now I need to take a deep breath. Okay, so so um, I'm just going to talk 
um, on a slightly smaller scale about our early career academic development program here at Stellenbosch University. Um, and if we can go to the second slide, please. Are you, are you able to see? Oh, can, okay. Um, yeah, so so the, the Early Career Academic Development Program at our university was originally funded by, by Mellon, currently DHET uh, fund us. And as the previous speaker has said, for, for us, you know, the key principles of our program are inclusivity, diversity, and excellence. And unlike, uh, I think, a number of other um, uh, programs at uh, nationally and and at our university at, at universities, we um, we try and offer as far as possible the program to all um, early career academics uh, have to meet certain criteria. Generally speaking, they're under the age of forty five. They've had a certain maximum number of years in the university, but we are less selective than, for example, the Future Professors Program and so on. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Um, so it's quite small scale within our university. Um, I'm, um, we don't have analyses of our 2023 uh, figure, so last year, um, we had 75 women and, th and 30 men and um, a range of um, demographics. And each uh, of our mentees has a mentor. I'll, I'll talk about this uh, in a minute in, in more detail. Uh, and some of our mentors have more than one uh, mentee. So, uh, and it's uh, if you look at the next slide, um, there's a pretty big spread across our university. There um, are some differences across our different faculties, but then our faculties are very different sizes. So for example, medicine and health science is one of our biggest faculties, which has um, the most number of mentees and education and law are relatively small uh, faculties. Onto the next uh, slide. So when, when our mentees join our program, um, we um, present what we call our our egg to them, and at the, the center of the of the egg is is the yolk, who is the early career academic themselves. Um, and we embed one-to-one uh, -one academic mentoring, which you can see at at the the top there, within a range of other um, ways of supporting. Uh, the the mentees. So there are courses uh, that are offered through the university. We have a very active um, African Doctoral Academy, that's the ADA, which um, uh, provides courses for doctoral candidates uh, from a range of, of African countries, but also to people with doctorates on doctoral supervision uh, and, and, and so on. We encourage all our mentees to attend a range of workshops, some of which we ourselves offer, for example, writing skills um, and, and so on. Um, and we see those workshops as really important for, for skills uh, development, but also very important for, for peer actor interaction. So one of our experiences with, with um, our early career academic development program is that some of the, the best support and the best encouragement that our mentees get is from people in a similar position to themselves. We're, we're, we're very serious, not only about uh, top-down mentoring, uh, but also about peer-to-peer uh, -peer mentoring and peer-to-peer -peer support. So we um, really like to encourage our, our mentees to, to help one another. We also make a, a small, grant uh, available to, to each of our mentees. It's um, a very small amount of money, 15,000 Rand per year, but that kind of helps kickstart. They're looking for other funding, pays for page fees. If they're publishing uh, in open access journals that charge page fees um, and so on. So it's a little sort of nest egg that we have there. 
And then um, our, as um, Rafilwe has said, you, you know, repeatedly, everybody needs needs mentoring. So um, this is embedded within broader initiatives at our university, including uh, mentoring opportunities for departmental chairs and people in university management, uh, and so on. So this is just one part of a broader approach to mentoring. So if we look at the next um, slide, we there are you know, a range of courses that, that we offer, many of which have been uh, covered by the presentation on, on uh, Tuso and, and uh, uh, by my, my previous colleague, uh, writing for publication, uh, literature reviews. Uh, we have based at Stellenbosch uh, uh, Crest, which, is, which um, looks at uh, science communication, science outputs uh, in um, uh, throughout South Africa and more broadly on the, the continent. Last year, the, uh, the World Congress on Research Integrity was held in Cape Town, and we provided funding for uh, mentees to, who wished to, to attend that. And then our African Doctoral Academy offers a range of courses on systematic reviews, research publication, project management, teaching, and so on. And one gap that we realized, which, which the previous speaker did allude to, is we haven't had enough so far on really planning and developing uh, a successful academic career. So that's something that, that we've built in and we're having a workshop on that uh, next month in, you know, in October. So if we look at the next slide, um, what, what I want to do just having introduced our program is just to talk about some key issues um, for us. And these come both from my experience with our particular program, uh, but also with uh, mentoring uh, PhD students, postdocs and other um, academics. So um, we get feedback every year by mentees, which is overwhelmingly positive. But um, it's it's important for us to acknowledge at Stellenbosch that we haven't had a formal external evaluation. So we 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 believe that you know from the kind of feedback we get and the attendance that we get that uh, at our various uh, uh, interactions with the mentees that we're doing well, but. Um, we haven't had, we're working on having a formal external evaluation. Um, what I think is really important for, for mentorship programs, and this again, the previous speaker men mentioned this very well, is that, that for me as an academic, this is one aspect of my work where there's an absolute alignment of interests. Because if our mentees do well, it's good for them and their careers. It's enormously rewarding for for the mentors uh, who are academics across the university, makes our program look good, and it's and it's good for the um, for the university. It increases our number of research outputs. It improves our community interaction. It improves teaching and so on. And I I think that aspect of of the alignment of various interests through a mentorship program is really what certainly in our university su sustains it. I mean, I think in in in, um, in our university, which is a relatively small institution, our our program is big enough uh, to be very diverse, but still small enough to be personal. And I, I mean, there's something that I really want to mention, uh, which is absolutely, I think, key to to our program, and is often hidden in these mentorship programs, which is the role of people who are not formally, who are not academics, and who are not formally in the role of mentors in actually creating an environment within which new academics flourish. So we happen to have uh, Fadwa Patel, who's the administrative officer employed in our division of research development at, at Stellenbosch, who administers the program. And as I always say to the, to the new mentees when Fadwa and I meet with them virtually, she is the heart and soul of our program. She knows every single one of the 130 mentees, she knows all of the mentors, she provides um, a level of care and support and infrastructure, which academics often take for granted. But if it's not there, you know, it's not there. And I, th I think that, you know, that that role is absolutely central to the 
success of, of our program. Um, moving ahead to the next slide. I also think that, um, again, the, the previous speaker has spoken about this, that it's really important to think about mentorship, not just in the abstract, but in, in our particular context. And Stellenbosch University has obviously a particular uh, position and history uh, in South Africa, and we see that being one of the biggest challenges and opportunities of our mentorship program. So. Chris Brink, some of you will know, was for a time uh, the Vice Chancellor of Stellenbosch University. And um, I've, um, I first put his statement in Afrikaans because it works better in Afrikaans than, than uh, in English, but I will translate it at, at a meeting that, that I was at on um, the issues of inclusion in our, in our historically very white, uh, institution, intellectual home of apartheid. Um, Chris uh, Brink said, op Stellenbosch is allemaal gasvrij, maar mens blij nog steeds a gas. So for those who speak Afrikaans, you'll be able to see the, you know, the play on words, but because you know, the word gasvrij means um, hospitable, but you still remain a guest. So one of the big challenges, I think, for Stellenbosch University in particular, but I think for all our institutions, is in what way can our institutions become true homes for everyone so that they don't feel that they're tolerated, that they're guests and so on. And certainly coming in myself to Stellenbosch University, I was previously at the University of Cape Town as a white man, as a full professor, but an English speaker with a particular uh, kind of background. For a long time, I felt very much that I was tolerated and not part of the institution. And I think if you don't feel part of the institution where you work, it, it, particularly if you're a new academic, it, this can have enormous implications for your research productivity and your, your um, ability to lecture, to mentor others, to do community work and so on. So the politics of belonging is, is really important. And part of what we try to work on is um, the importance of, of our mentees feeling that they have a voice, they have a contribution to make. And we have to deal with, with um, ongoing, often subtle, often unintentional um, patterns that continue to exist, certainly in our institution, but I, I know more broadly of exclusion, racism, sexism, and, and xenophobia. Another issue which has been uh, much more, more uh, better dealt with by the previous speaker is the gendered maldistribution of care. And I'm talking both in terms of private life. This is something, I mean, there's been research on it coming from our university about um, women during COVID and um, the um, women academics and care responsibilities at home. But it happens in professional life as well, uh, where uh, that we have to help our, our mentees be mindful to and to be able to stand up to who takes the minutes in meetings, who looks after everybody else in, in um, uh, academic settings and so on. Um, and, and I have found certainly at our university that there's huge goodwill around these, these issues. So one of the uh, big projects that we've embarked on um, at their request has been together with the Faculty of Agri-Sciences, which has historically been very much associated with white male uh, Afrikaans speaking farmers, but is, is looking very much at issues of, of uh, transformation. It's been one of our more successful projects, but we need um, continuing uh, mindfulness around these issues, which in some ways I think are continue to be very obvious at, in terms of the history and current state of Stellenbosch, but, uh, but are still there, I, I would argue, more generally. So if we go to the next slide, um, I think that um, there are a range of things that, that, um, that are important to think about in terms of the metaphors that we use around mentoring. Um, we know that, you, that um, our universities, and this I'm sure is something that, that your community of practice has discussed a lot, or, there is increasing bureaucratization, uh, dependence on metrics, indicators, and outputs, which has implications 
for workloads um, of, of academics, including administrative loads, but sometimes for a kind of um, alienation in some senses from a sense of home in the institutions that, that we, we work on. So in our, in our um, program, the Early Career Academic Development Program, we, th we think that part of our job is to give um, the mentees and the mentors to some extent, some respite from uh, a very output, output driven culture there's, we have enormous emphasis, and this is something the previous uh, speaker mentioned, on personal tailoring of uh, what a particular mentor needs from her or his uh, 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 mentee needs from her or his mentee. Um, we think it's important, so Fadwa and I individually welcome every single uh, mentee to our program and, and we, we try to create a sense of community and it's really important, I just want to emphasize again, I mean this was mentioned before, the importance of accessible role models and possibilities for identification that people who look like me with a similar background to me can, can grow in the institution. Um, we conduct our um, our entire program very informally on a first name basis and so on. But I've also had to come to realize that uh, through many interactions that we've, we've got to also think about informality because informality itself is often experienced as quite exclusionary uh, and, and culturally marked for, for some people. So we have constantly to think about that the role of mentoring in South African institutions at the moment is about grooming and preparing people for the institution, but it's also about the institution themselves having to change so that we are more um, inclusive. So uh, the next slide, I think it's my, my second last one, um, just some more general issues, part of which come from not just from this program, but from other work in, in uh, mentoring and my work at the South African Journal of of science um, is that their the, the, the mentoring really depends on partly on providing what I call academic bridging capital at helping people uh, find all the resources that there are in the world. And of course, you know, th there's a huge vari variability, certainly in our institution, across contexts and individuals in terms of, of access and the kind of bridging capital that can uh, be, be um, offered. So one of the things to, to, to think about in terms of, of mentoring is whether mentors themselves are plugged into networks to which they can, can introduce people because if, the, if they aren't, the mentoring experience tends to be much more limited. Um, I think that the, um, I've mentioned this before, that the commodification of outputs and audit culture have um, unintended consequences. The emphasis on, on producing things, numbers of outputs, um, you know, and the whole monetization of outputs in, in South Africa um, have huge benefits. Our junior academics and our graduate students publish and so on. But um, I, it, I think it does lead to a kind of short termism. Um, and we really need to think about attention to the academy as a, sp a space for longer term debate, contestation, and, and conversation. And I think that mentoring programs need to be able not just to help people get their outputs out, but to think about long term what it means to be an academic. Um, and, and how, what I've come to see is how incredibly excluded some people are from a hidden curriculum. So one example from um, a workshop that, that we did at the South African Journal of Science, we do these regularly, have one next week coming up for um, uh, new researchers. Um, we, we, we have a forum and, and one of the people who, who came to our monthly forum is a, um, a senior lecturer at one of the top research universities in South Africa, who told us that um, for two years she had been waiting to submit an article for publication, but she didn't know, but 
the journal said you have to have an ORCID ID. She didn't know what that was and what training she needed, so please could we point her in the correct direction. And those of us on this call who have ORCID IDs will know that it takes maybe two minutes to register anybody, any academic can register for an ORCID ID. And so it took two minutes to assist this person who then subsequently you know, was, was able to send this article in for publication, but she had, she had sat in one of our top universities, which has centers of excellence, which are world-class, um, not knowing what to do uh, in terms of a simple thing like that. So, you know, these, these exclusions are, um, are uh, real. Just my, my uh, final slide, which uh, recaps, I think, what the previous speaker said. We need heads and hearts in this. Um, uh, mentorship is about the professional, but it's also about the personal and the balancing um, of, the, of, of those. We need to uh, provide skills to people, but we also need to make sure that our institutions provide access to them. Um, you have a community of practice, and I deliberately use the word um, here because um, we've come to see that long-term engagement and support is key. I think that one of the challenges, uh, I think, with with mentoring is that a lot of the there are a lot of excellent resources online um, and that are available to people. There's lots of overlap and repetition, but to some extent. The, the issues that we're talking about are issues of confidence, of voice, of feeling that I belong somewhere. And so that we need to scaffold access to those resources through local initiatives. And it's in the context, as, as the previous speaker said, of relationships. So relationality is important. Um, ethics of care is important. I think we need more rigorous assessment of, of um, what, what we do, um, and I'm currently working on um, uh, uh, the uh, a project that I'm hoping to get involved in on, on taking cohorts of people through, particularly in the area of, of uh, journal publication, um, but really not, not simply mentoring, but, but having the time to look at, at what happens over years in terms of uh, these mentees, interaction with journals, and really developing careers as contributors to, um, to academic uh, scholarship and knowledge in the longer term. So thank you very much for your patience with me. Um, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to having discussions with, uh, with all of you. So th thanks very much. Thank you. And thank you, Leslie, also for some really uh, deep insights and some really, really interesting uh, points that I confess I had not necessarily thought of, <laughs> and I perhaps should have, having also thought about this deeply. Um, I, Before I say anything, let me just uh, say that this next part of our program is an opportunity just to have a, a, a discussion questions and, and answers uh, about the whole point. So our speakers are both still online. Um, and if any of the members of our audience would like to ask a question or make a comment, this is your opportunity. So you're welcome to do it either by putting up a hand, I hope I'll see, <laughs> or, by, um, or, or by writing into the chat uh, if you have a comment about any of those things. And we would welcome, we would really welcome some comments from the audience who have been listening. So please do go ahead if you have comments to make. And I know it sometimes takes a little while to find the hand, but <laughs> uh, Janet, your hand is up. Yes, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> thank you to both of our speakers. Really um, very inspiring presentations. Um, I just want to ask um, both Professor Swartz and Professor Paswana, um, 
Is there any way in which their experiences and contributions, are there any resources that could be useful for adding to the TUSO resources platform? Um, I'm also thinking of the early career program at Stellenbosch. I'm sure a lot of resources have been generated through this program. And I wonder if there's an opportunity for, for some of those to be shared within the broader uh, community, um, university community. Um, and even to uh, Prof. Rafil, we, I mean, so many words of wisdom. I'm sure we could, we could, um, there would be things, ways in which we could also share some of her experience and expertise um, within the broader community, higher education community. I'd just like to find out how we could do that. So would you like to answer that one, Rafil, we first and then Leslie? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that question very much. Um, uh, because uh, the book on research mentorship is actually open access. Um, and uh, it's, it basically people can uh, uh, download the PDF version. So it can be on the TUSO website and people can be uh, encouraged to access it. Uh, and definitely uh, uh, sharing other stories of success. Uh, so th there's a lot in terms of information. Uh, that can be shared and even talks uh, uh, on mentorship and so on. So I, I, I'm putting myself forward to say, okay, the resources we have, including Vision Never Dies, is not Vision Never Dies is not open access, uh, but we can donate uh, some uh, books uh, and uh, uh, navigating academia, which will be launched next in a month or two, will be open access as well. Again, it can be a resource that can be put on your website. Yeah, but we can strategize because, um, yeah, I believe initiatives like yours can really uh, help. Uh, and, and I think that's the move that many organizations are making, like the AAS African Academy of Science has put out a call on people who want to volunteer as mentors. Always the Organization for Women in Science also are reviving their mentorship program. I was a mentee for them uh, previously. Uh, so you can see that the time is now. And yeah, we can strategize a bit on what we have and and the potential we hold in terms of supporting your, your initiative. Thank you very much. You're on mute, Professor Burton. Sorry, thank you. Leslie, over to you. Oops, sorry, I just yeah, um, yeah. No, I mean the first thing I'm going to do after this meeting is 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 uh, download Professor Paswana's book. So so uh, because I need to read it. So I mean this is, um, I'm, and I'm delighted to hear about open access. Yes, uh, uh, absolutely. We we would be very happy to share what we have um, uh, and. Um, to to also learn from what you have on the on the on the, the Tuso website, so um, I can see this as 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 part of a future um, discussion. But always happy. We also have um, recordings of um, workshops that that uh, we've given here, and also that the South African Journal of Science has done. All of which are of you know we can we can absolutely put the links on the on the. The, the two source site, um, and I, you know, I have some things which were done uh, uh, from uh, some mentoring that uh, work that I did in Ghana. So, yeah, we will we will share those resources. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Okay, um, I see Dina has her hand up. Dina, go ahead. Thank you, Prof. Burton, and good morning to you and colleagues. I must Welcome. say that. The talks that that we've heard now is was really absolutely amazing. Um, so I was just thinking that um, perhaps one should also look at at um, training that could be offered to become a mentor. Um, but on the other hand, I was then immediately asking myself the question: What are your views, the two speakers? about uh, mentors that 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 
um, ought to be trained or perhaps they might think it is not necessary. Because I can imagine that in as much as mentors can play a very positive role and in, in, almost a, a life altering experience um, to their mentees, it could well go um, uh, the other way as well. So I'm just wondering whether they think that training, the training of mentors themselves uh, isn't, isn't perhaps also something that, that we should look at. Thank you. Would you like to make a comment about that, Leslie? Yeah, thank you. I mean, this is an issue which we, um, in fact, are dealing with at, at Stellenbosch. Currently, we do not offer formal training for our mentors at, at Stellenbosch. And the mentors themselves have identified this as a shortcoming of our program. So, so what we try and do with, with our early career mentees is to, um, to match as far as possible the needs, the specific need of a mentee with a mentor. And that's really my job is to find, so when somebody enters our program, I have to go and you know, find a senior academic generally inside the university, but sometimes it's outside, depending on the field, who, who meets their particular needs. I, I think there are, um, I, so I have kind of mixed feelings. I mean, if, if uh, we've, we've looked at this issue and there are lots of courses um, available, training mentors, but I would like to, to, to um, echo what, you know, if, if, if you think about the previous pr presentation by Professor Paswana, I'm, I'm almost willing to bet you that none of the people, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but, but that, that probably none of the people who you've identified, Prof, as um, mentors to you had, had actually necessarily given themselves that formal role or had specific training. So I, I think, I think what, our, what our mentors find incredibly useful is speaking to other mentors um, and learning from them in in kind of context much more informally. And a lot of this has to do actually with the mentors themselves developing confidence and feeling feeling that they have something to offer. So there, so there's um, I think there is space for learning, and particularly if you're talking about a nationwide platform and so on. But I think if you fit it too full, then what you start potentially to get is the people who have exactly what Professor Masrana said, the, the personal interest and the passion um, to actually feel, I can't actually do a 12 week course on this. Um, I don't have the time. Um, you can disempower actually people with the very skills that we learn. And, and for me, and this relates to other work that I've done in my you know, work as a, psychologist is, is that we we found if you if, if you want to train people as community health workers community mental health workers short initial training but lots and lots of support along the way and i would say the same the same thing for for mentors um but yeah hmm. so I, I don't know if that answers but I, I, i'm sure professor baswana has got thank you Ruth things to say uh Thank you, um, uh, Prof. Leslie, you put, it, you put it well. It might have sounded like it's a roundabout answer, but you put it well, because on the other hand, uh, learning is something we all ought to do. It's infinite, and uh, we can't plateau on that, and there's always something you, you can get, uh, even in terms of experiences, of other mentors. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, as you've said, uh, Professor, um, it shouldn't be mistaken to mean that, you know, to become a mentor, you must have been trained. Um, in the sense that most of it happens naturally without you even thinking about it. Uh, I, I was shocked by my brother-in-law. We were at church and he said, I didn't get to greet you because I saw you were busy with a mentorship session. I had just met two young ladies and I was asking them, what do they do? What are they stuck with? And, and you know, we sort of agreed on some follow-up and it was the beginning of an engagement. 
And I didn't see that as me busy mentoring, but upon thinking about, about it, I thought, yeah, uh, actually it was a, a mentorship. So most of it is informal uh, um, and whatnot. Uh, 